this episode we're going to be downloading and installing Kali Linux inside of our virtual environment. This is going to be really similar to the Ubuntu server install so we're not going to cover it in that much depth. Here I'm on the Kali Linux download section of their website. What I'm going to do is click here to download the ISO of the Kali Linux 64-bit. As mentioned in previous episodes, if you have a 32-bit processor or 32-bit operating system, you need to select this version. In my case, I'm going to select the 64-bit because I have a 64-bit processor and I'm running a 64-bit operating system. So now that we have the Kali Linux ISO downloaded, we can start up VirtualBox and create a new virtual machine. As we've done with all the other virtual machines, we're going to name it something. In this case, it doesn't automatically set these fields correctly, so we're going to change them. Kali is based on Debian, so we're going to select Debian as it's the closest. Here, we're going to double the RAM amount to 2048 or 2 gigabytes. The only other difference is that we're going to increase the disk size once again. I'm going to increase mine to 20 gigabytes. Boot up the machine and add the ISO as we have done before. On this menu we're going to select graphical install. And this looks a little bit different but it's essentially the same as the Ubuntu server setup. Similar to the Ubuntu server system, we need to set our host name here. I'm going to go for the default of Kali. Instead of creating a user, Kali wants us to set the root user password, so I'm going to do that now. We're going to select all the default options here because they'll all work for our needs. And then we're just going to wait for the system to install. At this stage we are going to select yes here to use a network mirror to continue setting up. And as before we don't have a HTTP proxy so we're not going to enter anything here. Again, similar to the Ubuntu system, we're going to install Grub. We're going to select the only device we have available. The installation is now complete. Before we go ahead and reboot, we need to move this machine inside of our internal network. To do this, we're going to right click on the networking icon, go to network settings, and then select internal network and ensure that the name is Demsec or whatever you chose in the earlier episodes. And then we can hit continue, which will reboot the machine. Once it boots up, we're finished installing Kali Linux. We're going to install tools dependent on each episode, so as we go along, we're going to install tools that are relevant to our needs. 